This is Sneaker Gears, my name is Levi, and welcome to a special Performance Gears episode where we're gonna be talking about the most expensive basketball sneakers you can buy, and what are some of the absolutely better alternatives to save yourself some cash. Let's jump right in. Thank you for joining in. We are just short of 10,000 subscribers. So I really do want to thank everyone who has watched and supported this channel along the way. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up at the end. So today, before I get into the most expensive shoes and some of the better options, I do want to give a little preview to how things escalated so quickly. In 2002, Jordan Brand introduced the first $200 Encore Performance Basketball shoe. You can see behind me here, it came in a briefcase, and this was with the Jordan 17 that was not only a shrouded basketball shoe that made it for on-court and off-court, I'll open mine up here, but this was a $200 shoe which just wasn't the norm. Now I got all my 17s and 18s in the wizard colorways because I love the white and blue and that's who he played for. So that was the uh, kind of genesis. Shortly thereafter, I think we're looking at what, 11 years later, the Jordan 28 released for $250. Part of what made this so expensive was this shroud that Nike supposedly had to license. So this wasn't their material and to have this be kind of stretchy and give the performance that Jordan Brand wanted to give, uh, this was something that they paid a lot extra for and said, hey, let, it's worth it, let's do it. This came out to be one of the lightest basketball shoes ever that was only superseded by the Jordan 29 the next year later. Now. These haven't held up to test the time. I have multiple pairs of these, and unfortunately, most of them are just dead, and I only wear these on court. So with time, just because you spend a lot of money doesn't mean it's going to be the best performance forever. This was $250. Let's fast forward two more years. The LeBron 10, specifically the LeBron 10 Elite, which was their playoff version that Nike used to do, was a $275 performance shoe that was legit just specced out carbon fiber, full length Zoom Max, or what they're now calling Air Max Zoom. Bouncy, incredibly supportive, actually really good traction that has a lot of bite and is really durable for on court and off. So you felt like you got your money's worth for spending that much money at the same time, it was $275. Now, I don't believe this one has it, but that was also at the time when Nike was putting electronics in the shoe that could actually measure the forces of your jump and your speed, which was really cool since they've gone away from that. But that's another element of just really expensive shoes and what your money is going to. All right, so let's fast forward to 2020 and Nike keeps kind of changing the game, actually starting two years ago, 2018, in the running line with their Vaporfly series, where that was, was it $250 or 220? Then the Vaporfly uh, next percent was 250. And now the Alpha Fly is $275 for a running shoe. Now this has specs and technology unlike any other running shoe in the market. And well, I shouldn't say that because this has licensed pretty much a lot of the market and many other companies to release really expensive shoes. Brooks Hyperion Elite 2 is a $250 incredible elite racing shoe. Now, I don't think it has the specs of this, but it's sure really good. Um, that's something I hope to have in pretty soon. You have uh, the Adios Pro from Adidas that's costing $200 with another super high stacked carbon fiber shoe. Even New Balance got in on the action and they had their Fuel Cell RC that's a $225 racing shoe that has just elite performance all around it. I definitely want to check that one out. But we're talking about basketball shoes, so I don't want to digress too much. So the top five basketball shoes, as far as the most expensive, what you can get in 2020, and what are some of the better options? Let's cut into that right now. Number 10, and I don't have it yet because essentially I haven't seen a colorway I want it, is the LeBron 18 at $200. Now, in retrospect, that is still kind of pedestrian, 
but it's $200 and that's at the bottom of the list. Now it is offering a combination of air with Cushlon with full link zoom. That's going to give you a plush bouncy ride, unlike pretty much anything on the market. But I will want to give you a certain option that may be harder to find, but as far as buying new, brand new today, I don't think you're going to be able to find something as plush or as cushioned anywhere on the market. So it, it does stand alone as the only one on the list here. And ironically, the cheapest one that still has some merit on why you'd want to spend the money on it. I offer you the LeBron 15. This is now a three year old version that I would contest maybe doesn't have the support, but it's going to be maybe even bouncier. This was probably one of the most plush, bouncy cushion rides you can get on any LeBron. Now the 18 is probably a little bit more plush. I take that back. This is a little bit more bouncy simply because it's using Zoom Max, not just a thin full length Zoom Air. If you can get your hands on these in multiple colorways at a cheaper price point, whether it's the 15, uh, I believe the, fi the 15 low was different. It was a 16 low that was actually really good. But this is the Kith version if you guys are wondering. So this was kind of an elite. I do have two other pairs of LeBron 15s because the cushion on these is unbelievable. If you can save some money and you're just looking for that max cushion element, the LeBron 15 is still leader of the class. Next on the list is a shoe I really wanted to get and shout out and thank you to Nightwing for answering his direct messages. He is an amazing guy on every level and everything he does. Uh, nothing but respect and props to the OG sneaker reviewer. And that is looking to get the Yeezy Quantum Basketball. If you guys recall, he actually had a pair and he did it like his initial review and he hasn't gotten around to it because well, usually if something's not that good or it's just bottom of the totem pole as far as everything he else has to review, it just keeps getting pushed back. I messaged him about it because this is one I really wanted to get. Now, I thought the Easy Quantum would bring back kind of that crazy explosive uh, feel because it's full length boost and we really don't have that in 2020 from Adidas. So I messaged him saying, hey, how does that boost feel? Is it is it bouncy? Is it crazy? Is it like the basketball ultra boost, like the crazy explosive was back in 2017 and to a smaller degree, 18? And he said, no, feels kind of dead. He actually said it feels a little bit like the BYWX, which is the boost you wear X, which was it had boost, but it was a lot of court feel and there wasn't anything that special about it. Now, you're talking about a shoe that is two hundred and fifty dollars and you're not going to be getting anything unique other than that it's a yeezy it's not this additional support or cushion or high-end materials all the things you can get and i want to give you an option that's something that's still a full length boost in 2020 for adidas and that's the boost you wear x2 or i guess the byw2 this is full length boost that actually happens to be open on the medial side on the lateral side it is encaged this again does feel for lack of a better word to quote nightwing a little bit dead but it does an incredible job absorbing impact it's light it's flexible the traction is awesome i haven't done a full review on this but this is something you're going to be able to get i believe retail was something like 160 i'll put that up there if i'm wrong and you're able to get it i think i've seen it as cheap as half of that at 80 bucks so if you're looking for a full length boost in 2020 that's going to give you similar if not possibly a better performance than the high-end yeezy quantum save yourself some money and get the bywx too next on the list is a limited edition collab with nike that there's been multiple colors of it and i really wanted to get this one because there was nothing like it when it was released and that's the nike fear of god one when this initially was launched it was a full length zoom with a double stacked heel zoom and it was just something oh man raw materials it looks amazing pj tucker even wore these on court now this is a $350 shoe, which does tie our second place. But for those specs and the materials, it was one like I felt I really needed to get. But come Nike and KD to the rescue with the KD 12 and the KD 13. This is something that's still giving you full length zoom with a double stacked four foot zoom, which is actually a little bit more appropriate when you're hooping and playing in the game. If you prefer that heel stack zoom, get the KD 12. 
this is going to give you way better traction than either one of those. Now, this is not giving you the premium upper either as the KD-12, but this is something that I've seen as low as $80. I've seen the KD-12 for around $80 as well. They released for $150, so either way, you're spending a quarter of the price that you would in the fear of God. And no, you're not getting the name, you're not getting the, the looks, which I think that looks pretty cool, and maybe you're not getting the materials. You're getting the tech, you're getting the cushion, you're getting an actual better performer, and you're gonna save a lot of cash in your wallet. Number two, and this was a shoe that initially cost $400 in the first generation, and that's the Adapt BB2. Now it costs $350, so technically it's tied for third, but that is using a heel cushion and four foot zoom turbo unit. Now it does have the cool feature of being able to tie itself when you just put your foot in, as well as being able to have updates where the shoe potentially could get better as Nike improves it. But all in all, it's really just a technology upspec Kobe 5. Now the Kobe 5 is available for 180 retail, but as we all know, with the untimely passing of the Black Mamba, the resale market and ability to get these has been absolutely crazy. And I know I've said it on the channel before, but if you're not able to get a Kobe, which is probably harder than just buying the Adapt BB, and I've seen the Adapt BB on sale at least twice, but even on sale, you're still looking, I think the cheapest I saw was $250. So the other option is really the Kyrie line. Guys, this is the Kyrie 6. And I think this was a huge leap in cushion over the Kyrie 5. The Kyrie 7 is on its way, but this is giving you that same full four foot pad zoom turbo. It's giving you a heel cushion, at least on the 6, that's decent. Not quite as plush as either one of the Adapt BB or the Kobe 5. But a shoe that's costing less than $100, you're saving yourself a lot of money. You're getting actually traction that is better than both of them. You're getting support that is on par, if not maybe a little bit better than the Adapt BB on this, not better than the Kobe, but you're getting all of that at a price that's generally for this, I've seen for now 60 bucks, 70 bucks. With the coat, with the Kyrie 7 coming out, it's still gonna retail, I believe for about 130. I'm waiting to see what the specs are on those and how it's gonna feel underfoot, but they really have improved the cushioning every year from the four to the five to the six. So I do have high hopes for the Kyrie 7. If you really wanted to get the Adapt BB just because it's cool, I can't blame you. But if you're looking to hoop in them on court, save yourself the money, get a Kyrie. And finally, the most expensive high performance basketball shoe on the market available here in 2020 is by a brand you may not know about. They actually made the first shoe that was banned by the NBA and that was kind of their marketing pitch. I actually own that initial shoe. And this is by APL, Athletic Propulsion Labs. The first shoe I bought, I tried, I didn't like it at all. I actually ended up giving them away. Well, they're back and they're still touting their uh, ban by NBA technology because they literally put actual springs in the shoe. And as all companies are doing here in 2020, they put a full length carbon fiber plate. They also have two stacks of cushion on the top full length and on the bottom underneath the forefoot in combination with those springs. Now, this is called the Concept X by APL, and it is a $400 high performance basketball shoe. This is one I have not tried in this new version, it was just released, and I really have no intention of getting it because honestly, if you're looking for the bounciest setup, something that's gonna make it feel like you're being pushed forward, I really just can't see how anyone's gonna do better than the Jordan 34. Now, this is one that's already been phased out, as it were, with the Jordan 35 coming out. Based on Nightwing's review with the Jordan 35, and I'm waiting to get a color that I like, even though the Jordan 35 has more cushion than the heel and the forefoot, uh, they did kind of what they did back with the 28 to the 29. The 28 was super bouncy. It was incredible. But it actually ended up being very weak for the zoom bag and fragile and had a lot of airbags being popped. So for the 29, they really did restrict the airbag, protect a little bit more, and you still got that balance, but it wasn't quite the same. They did the same thing from the 34 to the 35. The 35 isn't opened up as much. It's not quite as bouncy, but it looks a lot more supportive. The zoom bags are a lot more protective, and it just looks like a stronger shoe overall. I feel like Zion Williamson had a little bit of what has to do with the 35 development saying, hey, if we're gonna make a shoe that this giant athlete's gonna play in, we gotta make sure it's up to his specs. And that's for better, for worse, for all the players wearing it. 
Now this is the 34 SE, which I think takes some of the best characteristics of the 35 with the raw materials and more supportive and puts it in what most of the 34s were, which were very kind of fragile, very light, and most a lot of players did not like the durability of them. That's because it was the second lightest shoe, or to Jordan Brand, first lightest shoe they've ever made. 34 was available for about $180. I've seen it on sale for about $130 to $150. And the 34 low, which cuts it down about half an inch. <laughs> so uh, essentially, if you get the low, enjoy it. If you can get a good price, either way, you're gonna save a lot of money versus getting the APL Concept X. I don't know how that shoe's gonna perform. And if APL wants to contact me and have me do a full review, I would love to and give you guys my thoughts and see if it's worth it. But right now you're not gonna see that shoe in the NBA. It's actually banned for better or for worse. And I don't know if that's a good thing for them since you wanna see your favorite players wearing that shoe and see how good it is in the hands of elite athletes. And you're just not gonna find that in that shoe. So if you had interest in that shoe, save yourself some money and go get the Jordan 34. Guys, girls, hoopers all over the world, if you enjoyed that video, please give it a thumbs up. If it helped you at all, please leave a comment below. Uh, let me know what you want to see next, any questions you might have, and any comparisons I can do. As always, this is Levi Sneakers. I really appreciate you, and I will come at you later.